Okay, hi everyone. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, severe airflow obstruction. And we're going to have a patient uh, who's admitted with uh, severe uh, asthma. He's been ventilated with a tidal volume of uh, 520, inspiratory time of uh, 1.7 seconds. The flow is at 30 liters per minute and respiratory rate of 18 per minute. You came at the bedside and you observed the following. Let's identify what we see here. You can see that let me just freeze it first and identify the abnormalities. So what we see here is first, we have the airway pressure that is increased. Then we have the peak inspiratory pressure that is increased. You can see that the plateau pressure is slightly increased here at 20, 22 centimeter of water. The difference between the peak inspiratory pressure and the plateau pressure is increased. That indicates that the problem is airway resistance. At the same time, if you take a look on the expiratory flow, you can see that the peak expiratory flow is only at 20 uh, to 25 liters per minute. So it is limited. You can see that the slope is kind of shallow. And then it's taking longer time to exhale because of the time constant is increased. And time constant is the time required to exhale two thirds of the air. But the remaining one third will require two to three times time constant. So you can see here that there is persistent flow at end of expiration. This indicates that we have auto beep, and that's what you see here. The plateau pressure is increased because there's auto beep in the system. Now, how can we improve this? So on the ventilator, we're going to make adjustments that will improve the auto beam. However, before we do that, let's give you the blood gases, pH 7.37, PCO2 37, and PO2 89. You can notice that the PCO2 is very good. The patient is ventilating adequately, is requiring a minute ventilation of around 8.6 liters. So what you want to do is the first thing that you want to do are the things that will not affect the minute ventilation. And if you take a look on the graphs here, you can see that this is inspiration, this is inspiratory time, and this is expiration. In order to improve the auto beep, you need to give more time for expiration. Because the time constant is increased, so you need to give more time for expiration. So how would you do this without affecting the minute ventilation? You would need to decrease the inspiratory time. You can see here that we have a plateau time that we're doing nothing. There's no need for this. This is not oxygenation problem. And there's no need to hold the inspiration. So let's get rid of that. And let's go down to one second. So you can see now we don't have any more plateau and we gained more time towards expiration. We improved the uh, auto beep a little bit, but it's not completely resolved yet. So the next thing you would do is you would need to give that inspiratory uh, volume in a shorter time. And you do, you do this by increasing the flow. So you have a flow at 30 liters per minute. Let's just increase the flow to 50 liters per minute and let's freeze it. So you can see the difference. Now, once we increase the flow to 60 or 50 liters per minute, the peak pressure increased. And this is a central pressure. It hits around 50 centimeters of water. 
I don't like to go up very high on the pressure, more than 50, 50 cent, 55 centimeter of water. But as we increase the flow, we were able to deliver the volume faster. But since we did not change the inspection time, all what we gained is the plateau time again. So what we need to do is to go down on the inspiratory time and confirm. So we get rid of the plateau time again. You can see that we improved the auto beep remarkably. However, it's not completely resolved. So once you maximize the inspiratory flow time for the patient, you would start thinking about decreasing the minute ventilation. So at this time now, when we, when we decrease the minute ventilation, it would affect the CO2. Any decrease in the rate or the tidal volume will translate into higher CO2. So we can go down on the rate to 16 and see what happens. Of course, the minute ventilation is going to go down. And here where you need to probably repeat ABGs and see what happened to the CO2. You can see that we barely, uh, we still have some auto B, but almost, uh, uh, it's improved remarkably compared to previous uh, previous press. So now let's go down slightly on the tidal volume, 460, and go down on the rate to 14. And you can see here that the dynamic hyperinflation is completely, almost completely resolved. So if this minute ventilation is not uh, enough to provide adequate uh, CO2 for the patient, at that time, you would do permissive hypercapnia and you allow the CO2 to go up, you allow pH to go down, you can tolerate pH as low as 7.25 or sometimes 7.20. Lower than this, you can start the patient on bicarbonate infusion. So in summary, to uh, improve the dynamic hyperinflation uh, syndrome, you would maximize the inspiratory uh, flow time to gain more time towards expiration. The aim is to prolong expiration, allow more time for the patient to exhale and empty the chest completely. You do this by uh, increasing the inspiratory flow time, decreasing the inspiratory time, and allowing more time for expiration. If you maximize the inspector time and still not resolved at that time, you start thinking about decreasing the minute ventilation by decreasing the tidal volume and the rate. Thank you very much.